What up guys, Jay here from TV Time with Jay and I am back once again with another episode review for you guys and this time I am here to review Euphoria Special Episode Part 1 Rue. Now as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory. You have been warned. Alright folks, well, first things first, if you hear me cough uh, throughout the video, uh, do not worry, I don't have the Rona, I'm just getting over a really bad cold, but I'm mostly better now, so I am good enough to be able to do this review. And second of all, uh, if you happen to be coming across this video and you watched my Euphoria videos back when they came out on my original channel before it got terminated, welcome back. This is where I am now uh, because um, unfortunately YouTube decided to yeet my channel out of existence for no real reason. Don't really want to go into it. It's a whole story. But uh, if you've seen me before and you uh, you know see Euphoria review clicked it and you see me again, that's where I've been. So, um, anyone who is brand new to the channel and has not seen any of my previous Euphoria content, unfortunately I can't just, you know, point you in a direction, but let me go ahead and tell you, just kind of in general, how I feel about this show, uh, why this show is so amazing, why I love it so much, and um, then we're going to talk about the episode. So Euphoria is a show that is just like lightning in the bottle for me. So. I've always been <coughs> a big fan of, you know, teen drama shows ever since I was a kid. Even before I was a teenager, I loved watching that type of show. You know, um, of course, you know, in middle school, I grew up on shit like Degrassi, One Tree Hill, Glee, you know, the, the stereotypical teen shows. And then, you know, even as an adult, I still, you know, kind of gravitate towards that market because, you know, the thing about teen shows that a lot of people don't understand, and you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you know, being a teenager, and I know I say you know a lot, but being a teenager is one of the most tumultuous times of your life. There's a lot of formative stuff that sticks with you and that like stays there and is a pivotal foundation of who you are as an adult. And watching these types of shows as an adult, you kind of start to realize shit, I made these kinds of mistakes. You know, I know I know what it's like to be here. I was that kid. I did this kind of thing, you know. I, made, I fucked up in these same kinds of ways. And Euphoria, a lot of people gave Euphoria a lot of backlash at first because they felt like Euphoria was excessive or not really in a realistic portrayal of, like, high school or whatever. And, yeah, okay... Yeah, some of this shit is over the top, and yeah, I've never been to any kind of parties like the shit that is depicted in Euphoria, but there is at least one character in the show where I can say, a, like, I've seen someone like that with every single character on the cast. Every single character on the uh, main cast, or even some of the side characters, I can point to someone in my life and be like, yeah. I know someone like Rue. I know someone like Jules. Oh, I know someone who's been through, you know, things like Maddie or Cassie or, you know, uh, characters like that. Um, and that's a show that is rare, right? A show where you can really see aspects of your life in it. Um, and I feel like so many people resonated with it. And that's the reason it stuck around and like blew up so much. Not just because of the phenomenal acting from Zendaya and the entire cast and of course the amazing writing, but man, these characters are what really sell this show and why it's so amazing, right? Because you, they don't feel like fictional characters, they feel like people and it almost feels weird watching this show because you're like you feel like you're kind of intruding on somebody's life because it doesn't feel like a tv show it really does just feel like this girl's life and just all the fucked up shit that happens in life right 
people think this is just some kind of weird glorification of drugs. Nah, if you know somebody who has an addiction or, you know, has battled with addiction on and off throughout their life, shit is fucked up. And shit is not just fucked up for them. Shit is fucked up for the people around them, the people that love them, people that are even remotely associated with them. Like, seeing that affect someone that they know and they care about, it's horrible. And, like, that's something that Euphoria does very well. But they don't. the thing about Euphoria is Euphoria doesn't also just feel like a don't do drugs PSA. It definitely shows you, you know, the negative aspects and why you shouldn't. But it also doesn't just demonize the person who does it. It shows you why people do it. The reason, you know, the euphoria, right? The high. The reason people run to escape and they run to drugs. The reason that they try to fill a personal void within them with a substance why they need that why they need that to feel something in their lives and episodes like these this one in particular the Rue episode the special episode are exactly why euphoria is such an amazing show this is not only a christmas special but it's a bottle episode and it is probably one of the best if not the best bottle episodes i've ever seen in my entire life we stay throughout the entirety of this episode in one diner at one table having two people talk with maybe one other person like interjecting into the conversation and it is an amazing episode not just in terms of the dialogue in the back and forth which is definitely amazing but some of the shots that they use the close-ups and the facial expressions from both Zendaya and the actor who plays Ali and let's also not forget the use of music it's it's just all amazing everything is just straight up 10 out of 10 I could gush on and on about it but man, this episode proves why Ali is probably the best character in all of Euphoria. You know, everybody figured when Ali first showed up in season one that Ali was going to be, you know, Rue's OG, right? She was going to be, he was going to be Rue's mentor. You know, he's been through the shit, so he is going to guide her through it and she's going to finally get clean or whatever. And, you know, it might lead to some happily ever after at some point where she and Jules can finally be a thing. Well, no. It's not just as easy as that, right? Ali, yes, he's been through some shit. But the reason why Ali works so well for Rue is because Rue is a master bullshitter. Rue can talk her way around most people. She's very charismatic. She knows that she has a way with words, even when high as fuck. But Ali, he's been in her position. He's been her. He's been her for probably an extra 20 years. So he, she can't have that shit fly around him because he'll see right through it. And he'll cut through all the bullshit and get to the heart of the problem. And see, with... Rue and Jules, right? Their relationship is definitely sweet, and I do want them to be together at some point. But Rue, she has abandonment issues because of everything that happened with her dad and her dad eventually dying. That was, you know, heavily hinted at and, you know, straight up stated by Rue as kind of the tipping point that really led her into, you know, starting drugs. And... When she found Jules, she found somebody that not only could she confide in, or but somebody she could finally be happy with, and someone who could take that pressure off. And she used Jules as kind of a drug replacement. The attention and the love that she got from Jules is the attention and the love that she used to get from her dad. 
like someone that actually actively cares about her and like tries to talk to her and see if she's okay to actually check on her and that's not to blame her moms or anything like that you know of, of course her moms actually cares her mom wants to see her get better her mom wants to see her you know be clean and be a better person but her mom just has so much going on in her own life it's not like it's not like she can just drop everything and just give Rue everything she needs that's not fair to her and that's not fair to Rue and Rue understands that which is why she kind of <coughs> transplanted those feelings and that responsibility to Jules but what she doesn't realize is that Jules also has her own shit going on right she being a kid and especially being a teenager the world at that time it mostly revolves around you you don't usually obviously there are cases of more mature people who mature faster at this time but most people at this time when you're like 16 17 years old you don't think outside of you and your immediate bubble so when you have this friend who can be this rock to keep you grounded to keep you steady to keep you happy when you haven't been happy in years that's a lot of fucking pressure that's a lot of fucking pressure and that's scary you can't just throw that on somebody and expect them to be okay with it now i'm not saying jules is just this perfect person who you know did not deserve to be burdened with you know ruse problems right you know jules signed up for this and used rue just as much as rue used jules it's basic codependency right Jules herself, she's always looking for some form of validation. She's looking for some form of acceptance, which is why she always goes for these hookups. She is so desperate to find somebody that, you know, loves her for her, which is why she got hung up on, you know, the dude that she met on the one dating website that turned out to be Nate catfishing her like that whole thing that's because Jules wanted somebody to care and then when she found Rue she found that person but then she found out that being that per uh, Rue being that person for her also meant that she had to put in the extra effort to make sure Rue was okay because if Rue was o wasn't okay then it messes up what she needs from Rue and it's like it's this whole weird balance but I don't think either of them are ready for each other right at this point in their lives and i think jules is actually starting to get that because and rue to her credit is also starting to get that a little bit as well because you know rue decides nah i'm not gonna go with jules i'm not gonna run away this is not the right time for me it's gonna completely fuck me up I'm gonna get lost again and I can't do that I gotta be clean I gotta be better I gotta be better for my mom I gotta be better for Gia most importantly she doesn't even address she doesn't address this but she, most importantly she needs to be better for herself if she expects to you know help Jules in any way that's meaningful and so she stays and she ends up of course relapsing and she ends up having this conversation with Ali on Christmas Eve about how you know she tries to bullshit him about how she's doing better and then Ali just keeps hitting her with facts on facts on facts with just the reasonings why you know it's not entirely her fault addiction isn't just something you stumble into it's a disease it's something that you have to constantly battle and work past and work towards. You know, there's a reason it's called a remission with cancer because it can always come back. Same thing with addiction, relapse. It's always going to be there, no matter how long of a stretch you are. Um, as sober or clean it doesn't matter how good things have been it just takes one time 
as Ali said, to just be too cocky, to feel like you're invincible, and then you're gone. You're back in that cycle. And he's trying to teach Rue to kind of value herself and to kind of believe that she deserves to be better, that she deserves forgiveness, that she deserves a chance to try. Because Rue, she's stuck in this mindset of, nah, I'm a piece of shit. I'm a piece of shit. I'm the fucking worst scum of the earth that has ever existed. I don't deserve any of this. Jules left me for a fucking reason. Because I'm not worth it. There's no way I'm worth it. Fuck this. I tried to threaten and kill uh, my mom. Like, I threatened to kill my mom, the one person that still loved me, the one person that still believed in me. There's no way I deserve anything. And you could tell at this point, Rue was done. She was ready to just straight up end it. She was going to walk out of that diner and end it right there. But Ali saw that and he's like, nah, look, I get it. I've hit rock bottom. And he opens up and he tells her, you know, like, Everybody has that point. It's just you need to realize when that point is and you need to also realize that there's never a point of no return. You can always come back. It is never too late. You just have to learn to believe. And, you know, I'm not getting religion into this at all. But I do agree that, like, faith is a solid foundation where you can just be like, nah, you can there's always an opportunity it's more of like do you believe you deserve that that's the biggest obstacle for anybody not even with just addiction with depression right because how depression works is you just you hit that low out of nowhere sometimes and you just like is even worth it do i even matter to anyone have i even helped anyone does it matter at all? You know, I'm just a dude who talks into his webcam about fucking TV shows. How does that help people? What has that done for the world? I've just, you know, taken up people's time. What, what the fuck does that matter? You know, those kind of thoughts, right? You have to battle those in the same way that addiction works. Granted, I've never battled with substance abuse. I've never done any hard drugs. Uh, you know, worst I've ever done is weed. So, like, I can't really speak to any of the issues or, you know, tr different trials and tribulations that people have gone through who have had harder addictions. But, man, if depression isn't an ongoing battle, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Because, man, especially in times like 2020... That shit beats the fuck out of you. Um, I'm just going to take a second to be really real here. A lot of shit has gone down this year, both, like, figuratively and personally, you know? Um, of course, you know, all the actual stuff with the world, but I'm going to take a second to just quickly vent real quick and talk about it. I've experienced a lot of loss this year, and I know a lot of you have too, whether it be family members, friends, you know, co-workers, people you've known for maybe a few weeks, a few months, a few years, your entire life, since your childhood. People who have helped raise you are now gone for seemingly no reason. So like when Rue talks about that and she mentions like her dad and she talks about how she hates the bullshit about you know, oh, he died for a reason, or I, I you know, be glad you're alive because, you know, you deserve it, you have a purpose. No, that invalidates, you know, the people that have actually died, and I, I get that reasoning. I've had those thoughts, and it's, it's one of those things, right, where this show just, it feels like it gets into your fucking head, because it's just, man, I've, I've thought about this, and it's just like, fuck, I can't believe this is actually a TV show. This feels so fucking real, and it's just, it's almost visceral, man. Just the emotions that you feel watching this show and just having this conversation play out and being so invested because you're just like, oh my god, I, I, you know, it's not just Rue who needed to hear this. I needed to fucking hear this 
shit. Ollie's speaking to me, man. Like, what is happening? That's why this show is so amazing, dude. And I am really excited to see kind of uh, what kind of space Jules is in uh, with the second part, the second part of the special episode, and to see kind of where her journey is going to take her and um, how that's going to help both her and Rue in the long run. I'm very, very interested. Obviously, I can't wait for that one to come out. That hasn't been announced yet, but hopefully it'll come out before the end of the year. And I cannot wait for season two, of course. Whenever that does drop, you best believe I'm going to be covering it. So if you want more Euphoria content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Um, I know you probably weren't expecting, um, like, armchair psychology from a dude wearing a Santa hat, but, you know, I am a uh, psych major. <laughs> I did finish. So there we go. You know, got got that spiel out. Uh, you sat for a good 20 minutes. If you sat through the whole thing, I really applaud you. You must really like to hear a dude ramble. Uh, and, uh, you know, as a professional rambler, I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Of course, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And like I said, I will be coming out with more Euphoria content when the second part of the special episode drops, as well as season two. And I am covering a bunch of other great shows here on the channel as well. Uh, I haven't done reviews in about a week or so because I've been sick, but now that I am better, uh, I've gotten this cold out of my system. It's not the Rona. I promise I'm okay uh, But now that I'm good, I should be back to normal uh, Starting with this week. So, uh, you know, if you're looking forward to more content that content is coming. Don't worry uh, But yeah, that's pretty much it for this really long-winded review But it's great to be talking about euphoria again, and uh, I will hopefully catch you guys whenever I get to cover the second part of the special episode But until then I've been Jay from TV time with Jay and like I always say, once a TV fan, always a TV fan. And once a Euphoria fan, always a Euphoria fan. Till the next review, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.